Today I want to talk about dental swear words. And I want to talk about dental swear words because I think they're just bad words that we shouldn't say and we shouldn't be using those. So do you have any examples of dental swear words that you can think of? Yeah, and when I think of a dental swear, I think of a word that you really just shouldn't say to a patient. Yeah, I'm not talking about just because we're in the dental field. I'm saying we're in the office, we're with a patient, some words we use portray, just give the wrong message, and we need to just get them out of our vocabulary. For example, I think one of the biggest dental swears is Did you just say that? I did. I think when you say to a patient, that gives the wrong message. I would agree you shouldn't say that. <laughs> True statement. Can you think of any others? Yeah, I can think of some others. I generally speaking, I made a whole list actually, I don't think we should say something like just a cleaning. Why is that? Well, because if we say just in anything, it portrays that it's it's minor, it's unnecessary, maybe it's cheap. I'm going to do it. It's just a cleaning today. It's going to be easy. It's just a cleaning. And I think it minimizes the value of what our hygienists provide. What should we say instead? I would say you could say a cleaning because that is a common word. You could say like an adult prophylaxis, but I think we're getting toward the things then again. So I just go with it's a cleaning, right? We're, we're scheduled for your cleaning today. Now, say, that said, Darren, I don't think we should ever call it a deep clean. You've heard that one, right? I have. So what do we really say? That uh, every other cleaning is not very good or half too shallow. If you're going to do scaling your group cleaning, you're even better. Non-surgical periodontal therapy. Oh, I like that. That sounds expensive. I don't think that's a deep... What are you having? A deep cleaning. I just think it's wrong. On my list, I also have out of pocket. This is a very common one. We say this in our normal lives a lot. What do you think of when I say, right, <laughs> out of pocket means to me, <laughs> I'm going to fish in your pocket and take everything out. And I just don't know if that belongs in the dental world. I'd like to say instead, your total is. The amount is. Instead of saying you're out of pocket is, you got to just get rid of that swear word. Agreed. Let's look at our list. Ah, uh, yeah, big one. Confirm, man. We've hit this one before in other, lots of other videos, man. Calling and doing confirmations. Hey, Bob, your appointment is two weeks from Tuesday on the 22nd at 2 o'clock. I'll call you a week in advance to confirm. Right. So what that means to me is if I don't talk to you about it, I don't have it because we never confirmed it. It's not real. Confirm means to make it solid, make it happen. It's not confirmed. Or worse yet, you leave a voicemail. Hey, I'm just calling to confirm your appointment tomorrow at 3. So the person thinks, well, I never got back to the office, so it never got confirmed, so I just don't need to go. If you have a lot of no-show cancellations, I would really look at that word right there. Right. Instead, we might use remind. And I like to go a step further than just remind. I like to say, hey, I'm calling to remind you of the appointment you set when you were here last. I set. I'm putting the responsibility on the patient. The appointment we made at your last cleaning for tomorrow at night, just a reminder, something like that, it makes it puts the responsibility on the patient that you set this one up. How about small, minor, quick, easy? I hear this all the time. Oh, it's, it's a small filling, don't worry. I think what we're trying to do is make the patient feel more comfortable by saying it's small or it's easy. But what are we really saying? It's cheap. Right, that's the first thought. Oh, it's small and easy, it must be cheap. What? A small, easy, quick one is $160? This dentist is robbing me because it's so easy. In fact, I think we should turn that on its head. And I don't care what we do, even if it's a minor procedure, we let the patient know this is, this is tough, especially after we have a successful treatment. That was hard. You did great on that sealant or whatever it is. To let the patient know that we understand it's difficult to open. It's difficult to even walk in for some people. So when we say something's easy, I think we're, we're almost belittling the difficulty they went through to even get there or save up the money for it or whatever it was. Agreed. How about allowed? Allowed? Are you talking about what I'm allowed to do? No, what your insurance allows. You're yeah. not allowed to do anything. I've spoken to your wife. I've, I've heard that before. Your insurance allows two cleanings a year. And I'm not, this is as bad as pre-authorization. Authorize and allow have the same connotation. What they mean is some other person in some building in some state somewhere has decided what you're allowed to have in your life. I disagree. Does that mean they're smarter than you, Dr. Bob? Well, probably they are. Yes. But at least when I'm a doctor and a patient, we're together. 
We're deciding what's best. The insurance doesn't allow it. They might help pay for it. That's for sure. I like insurance. I know the common thing in dentistry is to hate insurance and to hate on people's insurance. I don't like that negativity. I love their insurance. No, I don't love that I'm taking a huge write-off, but I love that it helps my patients get care. So I'll say something like, hey, your insurance will cover a little bit of this, or your insurance will cover some of it or whatever. Covered, I'm good with, but not allowed, and certainly not pre-authorization. Gosh, you got to go to it. If you're looking for a word instead, how about predetermination? Or if you're looking for a shorter word, how about we'll check with the insurance as to the coverage level? So how about share or copay or something else? Those yeah, are kind of the I'm, same as the earlier one. And, you know, share and copay aren't bad words in and of themselves when we're talking about an insured patient. But when we get stuck with share and copay, sometimes we say that to all patients. We might even say that to a cash patient or somebody that doesn't have insurance. And then it's just weird. So I think we like to have one word where we don't have to constantly rethink who is this, is he, have, is he on a plan or whatever, and I just go with total. The word total is used everywhere in the world. It's not a charged word. Your total is, or the amount is. I think it's just cleaner to say. What do you think of maxed out? So, maxed out is another one. You know, We use it a lot. Oh, your insurance is maxed out. Even if that's true, I don't believe in telling the patient, hey, you're maxed out, because what that indicates to the patient is, great, so this dentist, I just got here, now all of a sudden he's taking every dime from my insurance company. They must be making so much money if they're maxing out my insurance. Just leave it alone. There's no reason to say that. Instead, we could say the insurance, it's limited to a certain amount per year, or I don't even go with that at all. We have a whole separate video on presenting cases as cases. And you know that I encourage people just to present the case. So as you start lying and go, look, your insurance maxed out right there. So these next few things you can't do, you're not allowed. That is just dead wrong. Sends a bad message. Here's another one. I don't like the word price. I hear it a lot, particularly among front desk folk who are new. We got to train that word out because price is a normal word in the world, but it's it's. I don't think it's the. You don't put a price tag on on a service. It's a fee. This is not really a bad swear word. I don't but think you can put a price on your health. Agreed. You, you can't put a price on it. It's priceless, really. If, that sounds a cliche, but it's true. The fee is a better word. And how about this one? I hear it sometimes from doctors. I hear it from people at the front. They say something like, I don't know what your insurance is going to pay. This is just an estimate. What, are you an idiot? Yeah, you work at a dental office. We expect you to know. Now, if you don't know, let's say you truly don't know. The best thing to do is say, I'm going to research the insurance on this for you, and then find out and call them back. Don't say, I don't know something, because this is your job to know. If they think you're an idiot, then the doctor must be an idiot too, because he trained you to not know your job. And no offense to anyone who doesn't know, but for illustration, that's what the patient thinks. Right. If you don't know, you don't have to say it that way. You just say, I'll research this for you. It's the same way. Here's another one. Doctors, 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 you got to stop using dentish words. Here's some words that are swears to a patient. Mesial, distal, number three, number 29, lower premolar. They have no idea what you're talking about. You see, years ago when that patient made a decision to not go to dental school, that's when he decided to not learn those words. And why would you try to take him to dental school? We are constantly showing people x-rays, so let's go to dental school together and I'll tell you all about what you need to know to pass the exam. That has nothing to do with what they need to know to understand their care or their needs. And I think we should also stay away from, I don't even like saying carries, I hear that one, margin. When I, am, uh, no, I, I want you to ask somebody tomorrow, ask somebody who's non-dental, tell me what you think of the word margin means. They'll probably say, well, it's like the edge of my paper when I print it out, maybe. That's probably the most common use. Yeah. They have no idea there's something to do with a crown or a tooth or a film. Instead, you just say the edge. The edge of the filling is no good. I like to use the word rotted out. The edge of the filling is rotting out. To me, those are words that people get. So I still think the worst swear is definitely the first one we did. But in the end, if you swear a lot at your dental office and you talk to patients in swears, they don't get it. They sense the negativity, and this will ultimately lead to a drop in case acceptance. And Darren and I have been all over the United States, and we researched this very carefully. And we for sure know, Darren, I'm sure you'll agree, that your case acceptance is tied 
to the way you say it, not what you say. Always. Say it in their language. Don't take them to school. Talk about their health. Talk about you're there for them. Don't swear to your patients. My Angelo says that people won't remember what you said. They'll remember how they felt about what you said. And I think all of this ties perfectly into that. you got to make sure that they feel good about it, that they understand it, because if they don't understand it, their answer is going to be, I need to think about it. So if you need a technique to get rid of these words in your office, first off, decide what the list of words are that you don't want. And then what I would do is I would put a swear jar in your office and make it fun. And any time one of you says a swear word, you put something a dollar in the jar, and then donate the jar to charity, have a party, do whatever you got to do. By the way, doctors, you can't force this on your employees because I'm pretty sure the Department of Labor would have an issue with it. But if you all want to do something fun about it to change your vocabulary, this would be a great tool. I'm certain if you do this, your case acceptance rate will improve. I absolutely agree. And from Darren and me, we just want to say 